Hello students. Today we will talk about Hall effect. Uh, this is a phenomena that is uh, an important tool uh, uh, and for characterizing uh, the semiconducting materials and thus it is an inherent part of our semiconductor physics course. So um, what is Hall effect? Uh, Hall effect is uh, something that happens uh, as a coupled effect uh, when current flows through a semiconductor in presence of a magnetic field. So as, as you can understand that current flow through any, any material would be associated with uh, charges that are having some inherent drift velocity. right? And when the charges are moving with a certain velocity and at the same time uh, they are moving through a uh, magnetic field, then the magnetic field must have an effect on uh, the direction of their motion through a force which you know as a low range force right so today we will see that what kind of effects can come into the picture when a semiconducting slab is placed in a magnetic field and at the same time a current is flowing through it so to uh, understand this phenomena in in further detail let us start with a slab of a semiconducting material which has a uh, three dimensions in the three directions x, y and z. So our axis system is something like this. This is your x axis that means this length would be the dimension of the slab along x direction. This is your y axis that means this is your y dimension and this is the z axis considering this to be your z dimension. So this slab which has a total volume of capital V say it has the three dimensions L, W and T. These are the three dimensions we have. Now in this material, we have a current flowing along a particular direction which we call Jx, the current density. So the current density Jx is along the x direction. That's why we call it Jx. And the current is flowing through this constant current generator. And the, this is the... Uh, uh, this is how uh, the uh, charges are flowing. Uh, considering them to be electrons, we consider the direction of current would be along this direction, right? Jx. So when at the same time when these uh, this charges are flowing through the semiconductor, a magnetic field is also applied to the semiconductor. So the magnetic field that we uh, have in this semiconductor on, on the semiconductor is this B. So B is the magnetic field, the applied magnetic field and this is along the ne negative Z axis. Uh, as the magnetic field is applied along uh, negative Z axis, uh, the charges that are flowing through uh, because of the current flow must face the consequence in terms of the low range force. Right? So uh, in this derivation of what kind of forces are at work and what kind of equilibrium situations can arise in this system where the charges are flowing and the magnetic field is applied will constantly move uh, to and fro between electrostatic definitions as well as uh, the uh, uh, low range force and the uh, equations related to them. So, now let us first talk about low range force. Uh, what is low range force? Let us write it down as FL, the low range force. And uh, as you know, it is given by Q into V cross B, right? That is that is the definition of uh, low range force in term of, terms of vectors. So now if we consider that V and B are perpendicular to each other and we talk about only magnitudes, then FL would be given by Q V B. Right? So in this particular example that we are considering Q is the charge of the carriers and that is electrons. Right? We are considering say an N type semiconductor or a conducting material like a metal. So electrons are the conductors and they are, they are having a charge of E. Electrons have a drift velocity of Vd and B is the fo uh, field magnetic field applied along negative z direction. So this is the uh, this is the amount of force that the uh, charges will uh, face as they move. What will be the direction of this force? So V cross B will be the direction of the force, right? So V cross B tells you that the direction would be something like this. 
so the charges that were flowing along this direction they will start facing a force that will make them move like this so as they move like this that simply means that an accumulation of electrons will take place on the top side of this semiconducting material right so an accumulation of electrons near the top of the semiconducting material this phenomena that we have just said that as soon as you make the uh, magnetic field on the resultant accumulation of charge carriers near the top edge of the sample this is nothing but what is hall effect so this is kind of a simplistic definition of hall effect that tells you that a transverse um, directional motion of this electrons will take place and an accumulation of the electrons will occur at the top near the top of this uh, slab right uh, the immediate effect of this will be an electric field because the number of electrons will be higher on this side that means that effectively you can assume that some positive charges on this side or there should be a gradient kind of thing that immediately creates an electric field what will be the direction of the electric field that electric field we can call ey because of the separation of charges are here and here so the electric field lines will be something like this that means the electric field will be along y direction so along y direction a transverse electric field will be developed inside the sample this creates a potential difference right because this electric field will obviously be associated with a potential difference and that voltage associated with that separation of electric charges is called hall voltage so hall effect is basically the effect of this separation caused by this magnetic field and the lorentz force and creation of a transverse electric field correspondingly also a voltage called hall voltage right so if you measure from this side and that side if you try to measure now you will find a voltage difference between these two sides the top and the bottom edge of the sample this voltage is the hall voltage right so this is this is what uh, is hall effect the basic idea of hall effect is now if i ask you that as soon as i have applied the magnetic field obviously the force is at work the lorentz force is at work and this amount of force will push the charges near the top edge but how long this phenomena will go on will this go on forever constantly the negative charges will move that way and then accumulation of negative charges will take place no right because as soon as this starts happening another force starts getting created what kind of a force an attraction between the positive end and the negative end so that means as soon as an electric field gets developed immediately a coulomb attraction comes into the picture between the positive charges and the negative charges they are inside the same material right so the lorentz force pushes them apart but the coulomb forces developed immediately as they get separated that will try to make them come together so the force on the other other side is the coulomb force and the coulomb force is nothing but the electric charge times the electric field that is getting uh, caused that is being uh, that is being created by this effect right so this electric field comes along with a force that will try to pull the two charges together now at one point these two forces will perfectly balance each other and after that no further separation will take place the system would reach an equilibrium so in equilibrium condition we can write that fc would be equal to fl in terms of magnitude then what you can write is e e will be equal to e v d b okay so this is at equilibrium at equilibrium these two quantities are equal now if i try to figure out that what is the relation between ey and vh so you know that ey is the electric field and vh is the corresponding uh, voltage right so what connects them the length what is the length 
W. W is the dimension along y direction. So, E y is connected to V h in terms of a width, right? The length and that length along y direction. So, this is the relation between the Hall voltage and the electric field. And this is the relation between the electric field and the magnetic field. Let us try to couple everything together. So, if I try to couple everything together, then what do I have? I have Vh is equal to W times Ey. But from here, I get Ey is equal to Vd times B. So, let us replace that. W, Vd, B. Right? Great. Now, let us talk about this quantity Vd. Vd is the drift velocity. The velocity in which these electrons are moving, right? What is the relation between this Vd and the current that is flowing? So, you all know that the current density J can be written as N E V D. So, if you have any doubts regarding this, this particular expression, it, it simply comes from the definition of current, right? So, current I is Q divided by time. What is the total amount of charge? present here. Suppose this, this entire thing has a volume of V, then the total amount of charge would be charge of individual uh, carriers, number of, the, number of the carriers per unit volume times the volume, right? So, times the volume is all the three lengths because I am considering uh, uh, this material which has a length of L, W and T in the three dimensions. So, that uh, multiplication of all three of them, right? So, if I write them as A, that is the area, area, this area, times length, this length, right, divided by time, then this L by T represents nothing but the drift velocity. L is this length, right, and T is the time taken to cross this length, that means L by T will represent the drift velocity. So, what you can write here is the current would be N, E, A and the drift velocity V. That means A, the area W times T. When that comes on the other side, you get the current density J is equal to I by A is equal to N, E, V. So, this is, this is the way you can express J in terms of Vd. So, let us, let us just replace uh, the quantities in terms of uh, the current density so that we can directly relate them. So, if I want to directly relate them, then this is given by W, right, Vd, Vd is given by J by N E, V D is given by J divided by v, N E times B. Right? Now J times W, J times W and divided by N E into V. Okay. So, what I can write here, I can write this in terms of the current, I can write this as I times B divided by N, E and the thickness T, right. So, this is your VH, this is the quantity VH. So, that simply means that the current that flows through the sample, the current that flows through the sample can be related directly to the voltage that is being developed across the material top and bottom surfaces because of the Lorentz force. The two forces EE because of the Coulomb force and the Lorentz force they balance each other and finally arrive at the point where you have this relation that VH is equal to IB divided by NET. This is the relation that we have just derived, right. So, what is the definition for Hall constant Rh, Hall coefficient or Hall constant is 
this quantity when you relate VH with the current directly in terms of I and B, the applied magnetic field and the current flowing through it. Right? So the relation between VH, that is the voltage developed, the current flowing and the magnetic field is connected by this constant RH and the thickness of the material. So comparing these two, you can directly see that RH, the Hall coefficient is nothing but 1 by Ne. And this is a very, very important relation because the Hall coefficient directly gives you two information. First is that it talks about the concentration of the carriers and it also talks about the charge of the carriers. So that simply means that if you can measure this Hall coefficient, how will you measure this Hall coefficient? You will measure the voltage across, you will measure the thickness, you will measure the uh, current flow through it and you will supply a constant magnetic field through it. So as, you, as a constant current flows and a constant magnetic field is applied, you will see that what is the voltage being developed once the thickness is given to you. So all these four quantities are measurable or controllable from outside. So when you change these quantities and study the behavior to estimate what is your RH, you can equate that to 1 by any. So this is a very good way, very very nice way to estimate that what is the carrier concentration and what is the charge or carrier's charge in the material that you are considering. Why am I highlighting the charge again and again? Because the P type semiconductors and the N type semiconductors have two different kind of um, material, two, they, they have two different kind of uh, carriers, right? So depending on what kind of carriers you have, the sign of this quantity 1 by the RH that you find, that means the slope of this graph when you plot VH by VH versus I, that would change. And it would tell it would tell you that what kind of charges, what kind of carriers are at work. Are they holes? Are they electrons? What they are? What kind of signs they have? Either a minus sign or a plus sign of this uh, Hall coefficient will dictate that. At the same time, the carrier concentration will tell you that how many uh, of them, how many of the carriers are present there which can be related to either it's a semiconductor or a metal or a good conductor or a bad conductor and it will also can indicate the level of doping that you have in the material. So this is a very very handy tool if you want to estimate that what kind of a semiconductor you are dealing with or what kind of doping levels you are dealing with in that semiconductor, right? So this is kind of a standard working formula uh, for for the Hall effect measure, Hall uh, effect measurement, Hall voltage measurement, or Hall coefficient estimate. So let us uh, stop here for today. You can just relate, go through the derivation once again, do it once again and try to figure out different kind of problems that can be formulated based on this working formula and all the derivations that we just did. Thanks.